Hello class, uh, welcome to lesson 4.1. Today we're going to be discussing about congruence and we're going to tie this into rigid motions. So this unit is about is introducing congruence and also we're going to be talking about congruence for triangles. But for this lesson we're just discussing the idea of congruence and tying it into rigid motions. And so the essential question we want to address is what is the relationship between rigid motions and congruence? So essentially tying the last unit to this unit, to this lesson. So our goal is to be able to use a composition of rigid motions to show that two objects are congruent. So we, we're going to need to know what a congruence transformation is and what it means for two figures to be congruent, two or more figures. So congruent figures are those with the same size and shape. So two figures are congruent if there is a rigid motion that takes the pre-image and converts it to the image. So if you're comparing two figures together and you want to determine if they're congruent, well then you could identify whether there is a rigid motion, some kind of reflection, translation, etc. That will take one shape and give you the other one. So the symbol for congruence is the equal sign with the tilde on top. A rigid motion is sometimes called a congruence transformation. So let's look at an example of a, of a rigid motion which is also called a congruence transformation. So let's say we have triangle ABC and we want to do a reflection about the line M. As li and this line M is a vertical line as shown. And so if we want to reflect this figure, well then we're going to flip, we're essentially just flipping the triangle over across line M and we get something like this. So we can say triangle ABC uh, reflects to produce the image triangle uh, DEF. And notice that the sides are preserved, which means that, you know, side AC is congruent to side DF, for instance, and angle C is congruent to angle F. And so notice that all the side lengths, is, all the side lengths and angles are preserved, and therefore this is a congruence transformation. And so we know that when we reflect about line M for the triangle ABC, that produces a, a, the image triangle DEF that is congruent to the original pre-image and so those two figures are congruent. Now let's discuss that congruence statement. This is known as a congruence statement and we want to basically break it down. So the letters here are intentional meaning that A maps to D, B maps to E, C maps to F and so on. And so we know that from this congruence statement we can identify more congruent statements. AB is congruent to DE, BC is congruent to EF, and AC is congruent to DF, for instance. So any combination of this has to follow the same order, essentially. And similarly, uh, if we're looking at the angles, angle A is congruent to angle D, which in this case are these two here. Angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. And so from any congruent statement you can make for, for a triangle, you can make six congruent statements if you're dealing with uh, triangles here. All right, so let's verify, uh, let's talk about verifying congruence. So if we want to verify if two figures are congruent, remember the whole idea of the rigid motions. A rigid motion is a congruence transformation because it preserves the length and angle of the preimage. And so to verify that two figures are congruent, there are a couple things that you could do. First off, you can verify that the corresponding lengths and angles are the same in the pre-image and the pre-image. So as long as the lengths and the corresponding angles are the same, then we know it's congruent. However, another way that we could do it is to identify a, a set of rigid transformations that would create the image from the pre-image. Uh, pre so for example, if you're talking about a composition of transformations, or maybe just one transformation that takes the pre-image and converts it to the image. And because it's a rigid transformation, we know that it preserves the length and the angle, and so therefore it makes the two figures congruent. And we're going to be focusing on the second one. That's our goal for this lesson, is to be able to identify the set of rigid transformations. In the other, in the other lessons, we're going to look at you know, basically the first step for verification, which is the corresponding lengths and angles. All right, so let's verify that triangle XYZ is congruent to ABC. They, they say that it's actually congruent, 
but let's let's suppose that we didn't know and we wanted to verify them. So we would want to find a composition of rigid motions that would map triangle XYZ to triangle ABC. So what you could do is notice that if I were to rotate this triangle one by 180 degrees, I could get something that looks like the triangle on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this counterclockwise by 180 degrees. And so remember, and I'm going to rotate this about, and I'm going to rotate this about point Z. So I'm interesting. I'm interested in pivoting this around point Z. So if I want to rotate about point Z, I need to draw a line to point X, and then I can rotate that and move it over to the other side. So I went ahead and moved it over to the other side. So this is X, and then it moved and it rotated 180 degrees to that other side. All right, and so next I'm going to rotate um, line segment YZ. And so I'm going to extend the line from point Z to Y, and then I'm going to rotate it 180. Normally you would use a protractor to rotate by an angle, but 180 degrees is actually really easy to rotate. Just do a half circle movement. So I'm going to rotate this a half circle, uh, count, uh, in this case clockwise. Or it doesn't really matter if you do it clockwise or counterclockwise because you get to the same point. We are doing counterclockwise though, so just be careful if you're doing a different angle that you would, you would use the same motion entire, for all of the triangles. But either way, 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, you'll get to the same point. And so we'll rotate this. But in order to do that, I need to know how, how far it is, how deep it is, and how, how much it runs. And so I know that it's 3 deep and 4, uh, and it runs 4 across. And so I'm going to do that and use that to help me rotate this. And so I rotate it like this. And so notice that it's three, three down and four across. So it's, it you know, maintains the same dimensions. All right, so I went ahead and I rotated Y about Z. So now next I'm going to just go ahead and extend and uh, draw the other line segment and, have my, and I have my triangle. And so now I have my triangle Z prime, X prime, Y prime. Okay, so notice that it looks very similar to the triangle on the right side. And so all I need to do now is uh, translate it three units across. And then I get the blue. So once I translate it three units across, then I'm good. And so my two transformations here, well, first off, I rotated 180 degrees counterclockwise about the point Z. So this time I didn't do it about the origin like we normally would. I did it about a specific point in the triangle. So take note of that. The next thing we did, following that transformation, we did a translation uh, three units across to the right. And so this is my composition of rigid motions, which means that this is indeed a congruence transformation. So that means that these two figures are actually congruent. And so when we do this transformation, we get triangle ABC once we transform XYZ. And therefore, we can say that those two figures are congruent. And, um, and so then we can say that XY is congruent to AB, XZ is congruent to AC, and so on. All right, so let's look at another uh, verification problem. So are A, B, C, D, E, and J, K, L, M, N congruent? If so, describe a, a composition of rigid motions that maps A, B, C, D, E to J, K, L, M, N. So uh, first off, you're going to need to figure out what transformation I want to do or you would want to do um, so that you can get these to match. So notice that they're kind of reflections of each other. So if I, if I were to take this and flip it over to the other side, I would get something similar to the one on the right side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reflect it. And so notice that M stays pretty much in the same spot as C. Um, it basically, some of these stay in the same spot. Like So what I'm thinking is you can reflect this, but you're going to probably reflect it about some point in the middle. And really, honestly, it doesn't really matter where you reflect this because you can always translate it later. And it doesn't specify how many rigid motions you can use. You can use any type of rigid, any, uh, type of rigid motion, 
and in any in any amount of rigid motions. However, let's go ahead and choose to reflect it about uh, this point, this line right here, the line x equals four or y equals four, because it's a horizontal line, so it'd be y equals four. So if we were to reflect it across y equals four, then notice that m is two units below, and so it's going to be two units above when it reflects. And then n is three units below, so it's going to be three units above when it when it crosses. And so this is n. K would be two units below, and so on. J would be one. And uh, finally, we would have L, which would be two units. So if we were to draw our figure, it would look something like this. All right, looks pretty. Um, looks pretty good. So now, um, notice that. Notice now that. And uh, let me double check the numbers here. One, one, two, one, two. Okay. So in this case, they said that A, B, C, D, E, and J, K element are congruent. So that means that if I were to, in the, and in this case, it doesn't really matter if I if I uh, reflect A, B, C, D, E or not. As long as you can get them to be the same, you're fine. But notice that this would normally transform to a this would normally transform to b this would, this would be c d and e and so it's very messed up if you look at the if you look at the line segments here they're not identical they're actually different lengths so if you notice this one is a different length than this one and this one is a different length than this one even though some of the other ones are the same length so like this one is the same one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's actually the same length as this one. So some of these lengths actually match, but the rest don't. And so therefore, there's nothing that we can do here to transform this to the other figure so that it becomes the same figure. And so therefore, there is no rigid motion or composition of rigid motions that would be able to map this to the other one. So because changing the shape um, violates the idea of a rigid motion, which means that rigid motion preserves the length and the angle. And so therefore, we can say that since there's no rigid motion, or composition of rigid motions, so there's no composition of rigid motions, that maps A, B, C, D, E to J, K, L, M, N. So the figures are not congruent. And again, like, like we said, um, because we know that the side lengths are different, that would also indicate that they're not congruent. But we're talking about this purely in the language of rigid motions for this lesson. Okay, so which pairs of objects are congruent? If a pair of objects is congruent, describe a composition of rigid motions that maps one to the other. Okay, so let's take a look at the first um, problem. So we have these two looks like wooden frames that you would put in a um, picture. So, so the pieces of frames, notice that that uh, they, they, they actually look different. They're not the same size, right? So they de definitely are not congruent. The only way that you can, tr you can map this to this is if you did a dilation, right? And you increase the thickness or you decrease the, um, the size of the frame. But remember that a dilation is not a rigid motion because you have, you have changed the side lengths. So there's no way that we can do a rigid motion to get from one to the other. Now if we look at the next one, uh, so it looks like some kind of pattern board. The, um, the puzzles in this case, if you notice, they're congruent. So if you were to take this part, this red part, let's just say this part, and you were to actually uh, rotate it, uh, you would have to rotate it in the direction of the clock here, 90 degrees. If you were to take that and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, well then you're going to end up getting this figure. And 
well not quite exactly that figure so you would have to do something else to it first right so you would have to you would have to rotate it 90 degrees if you did that then you'll get something that looks like this so this part will be rotated here and uh, I'll draw this a little bit bigger here just for your reference and then you have this part being rotated as well right so it'd be over here and so this is say the blue part and this part is the red part and so then it looks very similar but now you would have to reflect about this line right about the vertical line if you reflect it and you flip it across then it'll give you then it'll get you uh, to the other side so you'd have to do a rotation and then you'd have to flip it or reflect it over on the other side and then and in that case that in that case they'll actually be the same and so because they are because you can take two rigid uh, motions and map one to the other then the figures or the puzzles in this case are congruent all right guys that is it for the lesson so i hope you uh, learned something from this video it's a quick little lesson on uh, congruent transformations and tying into rigid motions so if you were kind of comfortable with rigid motions from uh, chapter three then you should be okay uh, for this lesson Take care, guys, and as usual, I'll see you in the next one.